Good afternoon, um, everybody um, who's out there. Um, welcome to today's uh, PMG webinar um, on Catalog Sprawl, IT Gone Wild, um, where we will be discussing um, the results of our latest survey. Uh, I am, whoa, there you go. That's who I am. Cesar Fernandez, I am your host today, Director of Product Solutions here at PMG. Um, I can be reached at C. Fernandez at pmg.net should you have any questions uh, regarding this uh, webinar. Before we get started, just a little housekeeping. Um, you can go ahead and ask any questions you want via the chat window. Um, I'll take those questions at the end of the event. The webinar today is scheduled for approximately 30 minutes. Um, you can also email me with questions at cfernandez at pmg.net. Um, and and you can uh, you, I'm sorry, uh, I had a little technical difficulty there for a second. Uh, you can also, um, uh, you'll also be receiving a copy of the slide deck and a recording of the webinar uh, after the event, as well as uh, the survey, um, which we'll be discussing um, as part of our, uh, as part of our um, webinar today uh, as well. Uh, would you all just give me one second, please? I, I, I apologize for this. Um, I guess I wasn't showing my screen is what they were telling me, and I apologize for that. Um, anyway, um, as, we, uh, as we go ahead and move on, uh, the topic of today's uh, webinar is well, catalog sprawl. Um, and so what is catalog sprawl? Well, catalog sprawl is um, a condition that exists when organizations uh, introduce uh, multiple front-end tools to their customers. Uh, you know, traditionally, IT has always tried to help their customers with, uh, you know, with the services and, you know, uh, to order the services and make those requests that they need to fulfill their day-to-day -day job. So what IT has done is uh, every time a customer has a need, hey, let's go out and look for some tool, right, because it's what IT knows. Uh, let's go ahead and throw some technology at the problem. So customers needed to report incidents and, um, you know, uh, make a request. They went ahead and introduced an ITSM tool like ServiceNow or, or BMC Remedy. Uh, they needed to go ahead and order a piece of software, what did IT do? Well, they gave them a catalog, uh, either a homegrown one or uh, some bolt-on to one of their existing uh, ITSM solutions. So another customer goes to one place to do an incident, to report an incident, another place to order a piece of hardware. You know, they needed to uh, onboard an employee, well, here's your PeopleSoft system. Now I've got three places to go to. Um, needed to request access to a system um, or get some role provision, where am I going to go? Oh, my, here you go, Microsoft uh, Forefront. Go ahead and get your IDM in there. And now, most recently, with the advent of the cloud, um, folks need to get these um, cloud services. So what, is, what does IT do? They go ahead and introduce a um, cloud. Uh, they go ahead and they introduce a cloud uh, catalog to their uh, customers. So um, the sprawl um, starts to take shape, right? And we start going down this you know, we start spiraling down this uh, catalog sprawl where your um, users uh, went from, you know, not having any technology solution and having to go to, you know, a fax or a phone or walk over to Mary and Joe's desk to go ahead and get something, not exactly knowing how to procure that service or, um, or, or get that request fulfilled to having too many IT tools. And you know what? They still don't know where to go or how to go ahead and, uh, and how to go ahead and do this. So let's go ahead and take a look at our surveys. But before we, uh, but before we do that, why don't we go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about the survey demographics. Um, uh, our survey was a blind survey of approximately 236 corporate North American IT professionals. 51% of them were in the uh, executive or management function. Uh, we got 49% uh, of these companies had 5,000 or more employees. Um, 69% had IT departments with 51 or more employees in them, and 44% of these companies uh, had more than $1 billion in annual sales. And of course, our companies uh, were, you know, they went across industries and represented um, industries such as computer technology, consulting, healthcare, financial services, uh, retail, and so on. Um, so, what did our survey find? Well, our survey found that um, Catalog sprawl actually is a widespread issue, and 71% uh, 
of the respondents said that they actually had five or more customer-facing tools within their organizations. Those tools that I described earlier, ITSM tools, identity management tools, um, hardware and software procurement tools, uh, cloud tools, um, and so on. And, and what they said was they were experiencing um, issues within their companies because of this. 72% um, showed said that they were um, experiencing increased administration expenses. And this actually went in hand with some of the other findings on this slide. 39% said that there was poor chargeback to the business users. Uh, to the business units, I should say. 52% um, said that there was increased uh, software expenditures. 38% increased license fees. So you see there was, there was a cost component here. Uh, companies were not able to manage their costs uh, and, and, and they were seeing uh, uh, you know, losses there. Um, in hand with this, 51% uh, you know, said that uh, there was decreased uh, control over their apps. You know, uh, uh, IT started losing control. Um, customers uh, were going outside of IT to go ahead and get the applications and the services they need. And you know this ties in hand with an increased risk uh, in security. Now you've got uh, your uh, business units and your customers going outside of IT to procure these services. And you know you may have a marketing department that wants to go ahead and start a campaign. They can't get that um, cloud server. Uh, or that cloud service internally, they're going to go outside and they're going to go ahead and get that uh, cloud service outside. So you've got an increased risk where you know confidential information may be placed outside of the uh, outside of the organization. Um, so 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 what is the issue here? Well, the issue is that we have way too many catalogs. Companies just have uh, too many of these, and 43 percent said of our respondents said that catalog sprawl was hampering um, their organizations and the type of uh, catalogs uh, that they were using was, as we indicated in one of our opening slides, 87% of these uh, types of tools were service desks. Just about every organization today has a service desk tool, uh, and most of those organizations also provide some sort of hardware provisioning um, catalog um, as well. Um, and in some cases, you know, still even 50% of them have an identity management system as well as some sort of onboarding and offboarding solution. So. You know, at a minimum, most of these companies, you know, at a minimum, more than half of our company had, half of our company had at least four of these uh, in play uh, at any given moment within the company, causing that confusion for the, um, you know, for your users. I'm um, sorry, for your customers uh, within the organization. And the last finding is um, not all that um, surprising, and that cloud uh, uh, service catalog tool is also uh, pretty much on the rise. Uh, and it, uh, you know, the survey we actually had a survey last year on um, on cloud sprawl, and uh, you know we we realized that cloud sprawl was a, you know, was a growing concern within um, organizations. And what organizations have done to try and combat that is yet provide another tool to their customers to go ahead and try and manage that uh, situation. So you see, it's 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 just the same story. IT sees an issue that their um, customers are facing and what they do is try and install, uh, try and implement another tool to try and satisfy that need uh, that the customer has uh, without realizing that there may be repercussions to introducing yet another tool. So what winds up happening when your users have way too many tools uh, at their disposal uh, and they don't know where to go? Well, they're going to go, they're going to wind up going where they know they can go uh, and they're going to go ahead and shadow IT. They're going to circumvent IT, um, and they're going to go ahead and get the, the services um, that they need and the offerings that they need to uh, to do their day-to-day -day jobs outside of uh, outside of IT. And this is across the board. This isn't just uh, you know one or two departments. You know, as you can see, marketing, sales, you know, HR, finance, all of them. They will go outside. You know, let's look at that marketing example again. Marketing has a campaign that they need to start. Well. What are they going to, you know, what are they going to do? They're going to try IT first, and IT may not be able to get them what they need immediately, or they may not even know how to go about procuring uh, of, of some sort of a web server to go ahead and get this campaign started. So they're going to go outside, and they're going to say, oh, you know what, I can go to Amazon. So they're going to go type in Amazon.com, go get their web service, um, and get their campaign going. What marketing doesn't realize is that they may be putting client confidential information out in the public domain. They may be putting it out there where it may be accessible by others. Um, and uh, that could compromise 
uh, that could compromise the campaign and, and lead to a whole bunch of legal ramifications uh, as well. Um, also, marketing, once the campaign is over, marketing may just forget to turn the service off. They don't need that server anymore, so that server continues to run. Campaigns for three months, campaign ends, server keeps running, marketing, you know, they're just paying, you know, for that service that's just not being used. Um, so shadowing IT um, causes a lot of issues uh, in, uh, you know, both cost uh, as well as security, as, you know, our earlier slides uh, indicated, um, you know, those to be two of the top, uh, two of the top issues of, uh, of catalog sprawl. So what, so what is our solution? Well, the solution is a single pane of glass. 57% of our respondents believe that achieving that single pane of glass was going to be important to the organization uh, and help to resolve a lot of the issues that, um, you know, that they were having uh, with the, uh, within their organizations uh, and with the catalog sprawl uh, issue that we have. And, um, and, and also 95% of the respondents said that a single pane of glass would be effective inside of the organization. You know, as we took a look at um, and rated uh, by importance uh, you know, this, uh, this particular uh, survey result, uh, we found that 42% believe that period of usage would uh, greatly improve, you know, again, that marketing, you know, that marketing example. You know, cloud servers are not going to be left up and running. You know, customers can go ahead and order a service for a particular time needed and then have that uh, service turned off uh, immediately. If we take a look at some of these other numbers, 41% um, said that, you know, I'm sorry, 40 uh, Thirty-nine percent said so the degree of service level increased because there was more uh, self-service, and most of the provisioning could have been, uh, you know, could be automated, um, and and that there would be uh, service tracking, so the customers would know exactly where everything, you know, where their request is at any given uh, at any given moment. You know, role management is also enhanced. You know, you can go ahead and onboard an employee a lot easier uh, and provision those roles uh, and the system access that an employee needs as well as once the employee is offboarded, you know, he goes to work for another company, you can remove all that access, right? Uh, you don't leave, you know, access there, to, you know, compromising, uh, you know, the, which could go ahead and compromise the company. Uh, and then there's the asset track, you know, being able to know who has what so that not only do they not leave with the equipment, um, but you can reallocate that equipment to someone else without having to purchase, uh, without having to purchase new equipment. So. Putting in that single pane of glass and, 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 and having everything go through one portal where it can easily be tracked and managed uh, was going to be very effective, as 95% of our respondents um, had you know, uh, indicated. So how many of our respondents said that they were going to go ahead and implement this single pane of glass? Well, 59% said they were considering uh, doing it. Uh, you know, moving forward with it. You know, however, even though they want to go ahead and implement the single pane of glass, a lot of them did say, you know, that there would be uh, some hurdles that they have to face. Um, the biggest hurdle was going to be from, you know, buy-in from business and IT leadership. Uh, 42% uh, said there was going to be a, a, a hurdle with buy-in from the business, and I think it was 33%, yes, 33% said that there was, oh, no, not 33, 31% said that there was going to be buy-in, uh, you know, difficulty in buying from IT leadership. Um, and that's where it starts. I mean, you've got to get those leaders um, to go ahead and buy into, uh, you know, to buy into this. Um, another couple of, you know, another few hurdles that we have in here uh, was going to be lack of cooperation, uh, you know, from the people who, you know, initially introduced, uh, you know, some of these, uh, you know, some of these uh, uh, tools. There's going to be, you know, with legacy and application hardware, you know, again, it's that, it's that mindset, hey, you know, I went ahead and implemented this. Uh, you know, it's my baby. I want to go ahead and continue moving forward with it. And, of course, security and control, um, security and data control. Uh, you're going to, uh, there's just a whole, you know, you're going to face a bunch, a bunch of issues with security, um, you know, and with data when you want to try and implement a new tool. Um, those are concerns that you need to take under consideration you know, in doing it because you're going to be tying into, you know, multiple, multiple systems and how are all these systems uh, going to, uh, you know, going to go ahead and communicate. So 59% said that they were planning to consolidate or do this. Well, what about those that, you know, have gone ahead and implemented this? Well, 73% of those that have tried have struggled to achieve a single pane of glass. Again, what are the reasons? 
66% said there was a lack of leadership from top management. Kind of like, you know, um, uh, verifying that previous slide, right? It said, you know, one of the greatest hurdles that people that were going to go down this road saw was that buy-in, you know, and, 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 and leadership. Well, you know, 73% have confirmed that, you know, that there is a lack of leadership from top management in trying to achieve this. Uh, another finding here was that um, there was a lack of cooperation. Um, from end user departments such as marketing, sales, and HR. Again, maybe this could be tying back to the whole legacy system thing, right? You know, uh, you know, they don't want to lose control. You know, they feel that they have job security. They may have introduced these tools, and they're running these tools within, you know, their own departments, and they're very comfortable with it. So it's like it's my baby. You know, don't take it away from me. I want to uh, go ahead and and uh, uh, not lose control. You know, this is all about job security. And we got to try and get away you know, uh, or try and get around um, all that and educate. Um, so how do we resolve um, the issue of catalog sprawl and, 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 and what's going on at the various client sites? Well, uh, what you do is you uh, implement an enterprise service catalog, right? Uh, that single pane of glass. It's one place where your customers um, can go to to procure all the offerings and services that they need, anything from onboarding to ordering a keyboard, getting telephone service, ordering uh, system access to mail, to cloud services, to your mobile, uh, you know, to BYOD. Um, with, the one, with the one single pane of glass, your customers go in, order what they need, report on what they need, request what they need. And um, from that point on, um, it's just taken you know, all the way through uh, to fulfillment. It's monitored, it, it's, it's tracked, um, and it's housed uh, within, the one, within the one place. And it's, it's, just one, it's just one place that your users, or your customers, I should say, are going to be going to. So um, how does this work? Well, why don't we go ahead and take a look at our, an, an example that we all know that we can relate to. It's, a, it's an onboarding example. We've all um, started a job at some point or had someone start a job and work um, for us. And, Within our example, here we have a manager who uh, needs to go ahead and bring an employee uh, into the business. With an enterprise service catalog and that single pane of glass, the manager can go ahead and start that process at any given point. Um, he could start it um, at the point of, I need resumes, please go ahead and send them to me um, so that I can review them, or to the point where he, or at the point where he's already uh, determined who he would like to go ahead and onboard, has already gone through that process and just submits a request to the HR department. So let's go ahead and take it from that point and say, hey, I've got this employee I want to go ahead and onboard. He fills out a form with uh, particular information about that employee as well as the role that he's filling. Uh, that request gets sent over to uh, Human Resources who goes ahead and schedules uh, the employee to come in to get a drug test, to have a background check, and fill out, uh, and fill out some paperwork. Once all that has been completed, um, the manager can be notified via the, uh, you know, you know, via the same tool, via that single pane of glass. Uh, he can monitor our request, and he's notified that the employee has done all this. He's passed his background check, he's passed his drug test, and he's ready to be onboarded within the same tool. The manager just says, "Okay, great, I approve it. Uh, let's go ahead and get him started. Here's the start date, and we get the ball uh, rolling on bringing that employee on board. Notifications are then sent to IT to go ahead and procure." Uh, hardware um, for that individual at the exact same time that that's going on. Uh, the, the communication services are notified that the employee is going to go ahead and need a phone and they'll go ahead and start working with facilities to get a um, to get some office space so that they know exactly uh, where that phone is going to go and some furniture can be ordered um, for that employee or a cubicle uh, procured uh, for that employee. Um, while all this is going on we're going to go, uh, we can automatically provision email and, uh, and, and get the system access that the employee needs to go ahead and get his job. So all of this is happening simultaneously, whereas before it would happen very in, in a serial fashion, right? We do step one, then we get step two done, then get step three done. Here we're doing um, all, of it, all of it at once. We can also at this time go ahead and send the request out to security to go ahead and get a badge. 
um, you know, uh, so that the employee has access into the building. So when he comes in on day one, that badge is out, or at least the temporary badge is waiting for him, and he can go ahead and have his picture taken. It's all been pre-approved. Uh, he gets his badge, and he can go ahead and enter the building instead of having to wait um, for someone um, or have to make several trips back to security to try and get his uh, his ID, uh, you know, his, his ID done. Uh, and once uh, the employee comes on board, well, he may see that he needs additional services. He may need some cloud service to get some particular project that he needs done. He can go into the same tool and order some, um, some cloud service. And because he had originally been onboarded within the tool, he now, uh, we can now tie everything back to him. And this subscription for this new cloud service back to his, uh, you know, back to his organization, back to his department, back to him, uh, the, you know, the individual himself, um, so that he, so that we can go ahead and monitor that additional cloud service uh, that he has. And suppose your employee uh, says, "Hey, you know what? This is a great laptop that you gave me, but I have a better one, or I want to go ahead and use my phone because I like my phone better." Well, via the service catalog, he can also, um, you know, come in and, and submit a request, a BYOD request, so that they can go ahead and get his. Um, he can go ahead and get his, uh, you know, phone. Uh, ready or his laptop ready to be used uh, within the uh, within the organization. Um, so you, you can see with you know with this one simple example, this one example that everyone is you know pretty familiar with or has experienced uh, at some point or another. Um, yeah, you know, that single pane of glass really helps. You know, you've got a manager who, who who's only going to go to one place. He's going to fill out one request. There's only one form that he's going to need, and at that point, it just takes off and it integrates and communicates and collaborates with all these other systems, right? So that IT is now, instead of just automating within silos uh, themselves to do something quickly within silos, they can go ahead and orchestrate across these silos where everything is automated within the silos but then communicating immediately and collaborating with all of the other, uh, with all of the other departments to go ahead and provide um, better service delivery, quicker service delivery, more transparency into that uh, service delivery as well as transparency into the pricing because the manager will now know what act, what it act, not only what it takes to bring an employee on board but what that employee is going to wind up costing him to bring him on board because it's not all about salary right it's all about um, everything else that that employee is going to uh, wind up needing so if there's you know if there's a takeaway from you know from this example is that you know your enterprise service catalog is your single pane of glass it's the one place um, to go ahead and get everything. You know, it's the one place where uh, IT can go ahead and consolidate and collaborate, um, you know, orchestrate that process you know, across um, all the uh, different departments within the organization. You know, it's also uh, a, a way to give uh, IT enhanced control um, over the process as well as the apps uh, and services that um, they're going to go ahead and provide to their customers. It's also going to allow a place for your customers to uh, request, uh, track their requests, you know, from beginning to end, so that they know uh, whether or not a ticket had to be automatically cut within the system at some point, you know, because there was an issue with getting an ID set up. Your 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 customers are going to be able to see, you know, the evolution of that uh, request being fulfilled, including any you know any issues that you know may arise uh, where in the past uh, those things were taken offline. Um, to be resolved, and, and there was no transparency to the manager. Um, once users, you know, are, uh, your employees are in, you know, they're also going to be able to manage their own subscriptions. Um, you know, they'll be able to, you know, that marketing server that that new employee needs to get set up for some campaign that he was hired to do. Uh, well, if he needs additional disk space on that server uh, or additional RAM to handle something, well, he's going to be able to manage that subscription himself via the enterprise service catalog because he's going to have, you know, he's going to have a view into that subscription. Uh, and he's going to be able to modify that. So now you're taking a lot of that um, uh, responsibility that used to result in data center over, you know, to the user and, you know, giving them true, uh, giving them true self-service. You know, and finally, you're going to have financial transparency, which is really what it's all about, right? Uh, you're going to want to see what your spend is. You're going to want to see, uh, you know, what your costs are. Um, so you can have a little bit more of a foothold um, over those. So um, how does this all work? 
and how is it beneficial? Well, on the for the customers, you know, as we've been saying, single pane of glass, it's one place to make any type of request. Uh, your users, your customers are going to be able to come in and, um, you know, order integrated bundles. You know, that employee onboarding example that we did, it was an integrated bundle. Um, you know, while it was just one form that was filled out, uh, you know, they we bundled things in there like computers and laptops and uh, ID badges and, and email and access to systems and, um, you know, a whole bunch of good stuff, even drug testing. You know, we got the whole human resource process done. You can take it even further to, you know, have them fill out forms for their 401k and all that. Um, so you can just go ahead and throw all these types of services from all the departments within your organization uh, into the mix. Because it is an enterprise service catalog, it's going to reach out to all of them and do that coordinating for you and do all that orchestration for you. Um, again, provide true self-service provisioning and auto-provisioning. Um, your, your users are going to have more control over it. They're going to be able to see their subscriptions and manage the services uh, you know, that they do have and edit those subscriptions um, as well. They'll be able to monitor, again, monitor and view that fulfillment status in real time. And again, most importantly, and, and, and I think we've I probably mentioned price and cost <laughs> during every slide of this uh, webinar, and you know what? That's really what it all boils down to, right? You need to try and control those costs, and an enterprise service catalog, and that one single pane of glass can go ahead and help you do that because you're capturing that transaction at the very beginning, and um, because you're you're capturing it there, you're able to to manage um, that asset. You're able to manage the cost. You're able to manage. Uh, you know, what the spend is um, all the way through uh, the life cycle itself. So those are the benefits to the customer. What about IT? Well, IT, again, they're going to be able to define and control those uh, available services uh, and provide, again, there's that pricing, that pricing and cost transparency, you know, back to the, uh, you know, um, back to the customers. Uh, they're also going to be able to orchestrate, you know, that fulfillment process instead of having, uh, you know, let me go to this one catalog to do this, and then once that's done, i got to go to the other one, and having all those delays. With that orchestration and integration, you can go ahead and, and just build the one process to go against all of these systems so that you don't have a person going from one to the next to the next to the next um, and spending a lot of time uh, doing that. Um, they'll be able to, you know, get all the other tools that most of these things have, access reports on request volume um, so that they can see, you know, what's being ordered, uh, and they can go ahead and keep the uh, catalog relevant, retire those services that are no longer needed, bring those new ones in um, that uh, customers may want. And again, you know, what, what does this do? It, it helps IT adapt quickly to, uh, to the needs of the business. And because everything is under IT's control, once again, um, they're going to wind up, uh, they're going to be able to provide uh, improved security um, to, uh, you know, to, to their customers and to the organization. But again, the one thing I want to emphasize, which we've been emphasizing throughout this whole thing, is that catalog sprawl will definitely help curb your costs. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, the enterprise service catalog will help curb your costs. Catalog sprawl will increase those. Um, I think that's it for today on our uh, webinar. Um, I know that we're a little bit, well, actually, we're right at 30 minutes. Um, I will go ahead and take um, a couple of questions uh, on here. Uh, just one second. I'm trying to to read through um, some of these that are coming up. They're like a little fast and furious. Um, all right. So, how do you recommend getting buy-in from uh, from leadership? All right. Well, that's a good uh, question. Um, and you can start by showing them this survey. Right. Um, uh, the managers, from you know my experience, managers like show. They don't really like tell. Uh, and if you can show your managers or your leadership that you know, catalog scroll is an issue, you know, that, you know, and, and show them how many of these different customer facing tools you actually have in your organization. Um, show them the, you know, how the cost is, uh, you know, how having all these is increasing in cost. You know, one, one thing they can relate to is money. And if you show them that, you know, having multiple tools there that, you know, that is causing delays in getting things done, that is, you know, forcing your customers to go out to outside services, which then increase costs. Uh, if you can show them all of this, I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to get buy-in um, a little bit, uh, a little bit more quickly. Um, let me see. I have legacy systems in place that I cannot lose. How does a single 
pane of glass help me with these? Well, a single pane of glass will help you, uh, will give you that one place where your users can go. We're not, we're not saying to get rid of your legacy systems. You know, there are systems that are designed to do the things that, um, that they do, and they do them very, very well. Um, what, what we're saying is that the single pane of glass will help you just give that one layer to the customer, uh, and then you can go ahead and tie into those legacy systems. You know, we're not saying replace PeopleSoft. PeopleSoft does an awesome job of managing, you know, your um, employees. Uh, and, and, and their records and whatnot, but you can integrate into the PeopleSoft. And that way, you know, your manager doesn't have to go to PeopleSoft to go ahead and order, or I'm sorry, <laughs> put a request in for a new employee. They can go do that within the service catalog instead of going to PeopleSoft to request that and then go into another catalog to do something else and then go into another catalog, you know, and trying to fit those pieces together to get that employee onboarded. He'll have just the one place to go uh, to go ahead and get that employee onboarded. Um, I'm going to take one more, and then we're going to um, uh, hop. So how does this specifically help with my ITFM? Okay. Uh, well, uh, because you're going to be capturing that transaction um, at the very beginning, you know, when, when you order it, uh, you'll be able to, you'll have, that, uh, you'll have that record, so you'll know exactly what your spend was on that particular item. And because you're capturing it uh, at this, you know, at this, when, when it was originally ordered, you know, those subscriptions that um, folks have gotten uh, will be monitored, and you can go ahead and track them, and, and you'll be able to see that, uh, you know, that cost uh, and, and exactly what, um, the, uh, what the spend is. Now, we're not saying this is an accounting system. You know, we can, uh, you know, you will integrate into an accounting system and go ahead and push that information off uh, to it, but because you're actually capturing it at the transaction point, um, that transaction at the very beginning, uh, you'll, you're going to have a lot more control um, over it than you would uh, uh, if it was just, you know, done at, you know, within any other system. You'll be able to see actually what that cost is for the entire service as opposed to just the bits and pieces uh, here and there. And because everything will be in one place and your customers are going to go um, into one place, the likelihood that they'll go outside to, you know, to an Amazon or, you know, to a Dell or, or to some external uh, vendor uh, is going to go ahead and be diminished, uh, and you'll be able to, uh, you know, curb the, uh, you know, that, uh, the, those hidden uh, charges uh, within, uh, within the departments themselves. All right, um, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up now. Um, any other questions that have been asked? Um, we will go ahead and email you uh, with a response. Um, again, thank you um, for your time uh, today, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you next time.